Hi Scorpio, it's Dana with Taurus Star Tarot and we are about to do a reading for your sign today. That being said, as we all know, this cannot possibly be a personal reading for you because I don't even know who's watching this. So this is a general reading for the sign of Scorpio. If you would like a personal reading from me, you can reach me at TaurusStarTarot.com for 40 bucks. We can hook you up just like this, just for you, just for your situation. This is a reading for the sign of Scorpio. If you have Scorpio anywhere in your astrological chart, this reading may resonate with you. It may not. If it does resonate with you, that's awesome. That means these messages are for you from spirit today. If it doesn't resonate with you, it just isn't your reading, my friend. However, I do want to say that it's super important to know your not only your sun sign, but your moon sign, your ascending sign, and your Venus sign. Why, you say? Because, you know, your sun sign is how you receive information from the world. So as a Scorpio sun sign, this is the, the, you receive information from the world and you process it from the perspective of a Scorpio. Your moon sign is how you feel about your world and how you process everything that comes in. If Scorpio is your moon, you process incoming information as a Scorpio. Your ascending sign or your rising sign is how you disseminate information that's come in, been processed, and goes back out again. If Scorpio is your rising sign, then once it comes in and it's processed and spit back out again, it is spit back out from the perspective of a Scorpio. Understand? And then your Venus sign is how you give and receive love. There's a link in the box below where you can generate a free astrological chart that will tell you the positioning of the planets on the day and the time that you were born. Super interesting. Give it a go. It will amaze you. Okay, what else? I think that's about it. All right, this reading, I'm going to read this reading both ways. I'm going to read this reading as a career reading, and I'm going to read this reading as a love reading because it can really go both ways. I want to point out that you have the Wheel of Fortune twice in this reading. And not only do you have the Wheel of Fortune twice, but you have one, two, three, four, five aces on the board. I know you can't see them all right now, um, but you have five aces on the board and two empresses, okay? <laughs> so this is a, a powerful reading. This is very powerful for somebody out there. This is, is uh, it's, it's loaded, right? It's locked and loaded. So let's, uh, let's see what all this has to say and what this means to you, Scorpio, okay? Let's see what all this says and what this means to you. So, in the beginning, God said, no. in the beginning, um, there is strength, right? You, you, you have to pull on some strength. You're going to have to pull on some strength because you're trying to build a foundation for your life. You're trying to build this four of wands foundation. You want harmony in your life, right? You want to build a home and you want harmony. And you're going to pull the trigger pretty darn quick on this whole thing right here. I want to get a little perspective perspective, perspective, perspective on this situation though. What happened right before this, Tara? What happened right before this that makes Scorpio need to have strength in order to pull this trigger, in order to go forward, in order to achieve what they want as far as harmony and home in their, their life? Oh, look. Look right here. It fell on the floor. Why are you going to need strength, Scorpio? Well, the devil energy came out first because there is some kind of restriction that you have in your life. Some kind of restriction in regards to a commitment that you need to do away with real quick. Okay? Need to do away real with real quick. Now, if we're talking about love here, perhaps you are um, perhaps you are attached and bound to and therefore restricted by some kind 
of toxic relationship. Perhaps it's some kind of a, of a toxic sexual relationship. Hmm. Okay, relationship. Perhaps you are, are restricted by some kind of toxic attachment to somebody. And it is restricting your ability to commit. But you're going to change that real quick. You see this for what it is, and it's done. It's out. Congrats, Scorpio, because a lot of people go through their life being chained to that devil right there. A lot of people go through life not even recognizing that they can flip that chain off their head real quick and walk away. But that's what the devil does, right? He likes to keep you imprisoned by your own free will. Imprisoned of your own free will. In regards to some kind of a commitment. But you're changing that real quick. You recognize it and you're out. Now, if this is a career reading, there is some kind of, of rest restriction that you have, right? And I, I think that this restriction would be involving your shadow self, something that tells you that you don't have what it takes, right? That's your shadow self is when those, those thoughts and those words that float around your head and they, they restrict you because they are depraving, right? They're, they're, they're self-depraving thoughts in your head that keep you from being able to make the commitment that you need to make in order to have the career that you need to have. But you're changing that real quick. Changing it real quick, okay? So that explains why you need to have strength because you're trying to loose yourself from that devil, right? That explains why you need some strength in order to have harmony and happiness in your life. And you're ready. You're ready to launch. You're ready to go. You have a burden. Okay, the Ten of Wands. It's, it's about burden, responsibility, but it's also about hard work and achievement at the end, right? So hard work and achievement. You've been working very hard on something, Scorpio. You've been working very hard on something, waiting for your ships to come in. Because when that cargo comes in on that ship, you will have the materials by which to build the rest of your life. Okay? Love, career, interchangeable right here. When these ships come in and you obtain that cargo by which to build your life upon, that's what you're waiting for right here. You're waiting to have authority, control, structure, and establishment in your life. This is the card of Aries may mean something, may not. You are manifesting this. You are manifesting these ships coming in by doing your due diligence and putting in the hard work that's required, that is required of you from the universe, right? We don't just get anything for free. We have to work for it. And Scorpio, above and beyond anybody, maybe Taurus, understands that hardcore. The chariot says that you have control of the situation. You have willpower and determination to see it through to the end. You are hell bent on this happening. You are hell bent on using those wands, using this cargo to build your future, to get, uh, to get control, authority, establishment, and structure in your life. You're manifesting it hard. You're putting in the work. You have control, willpower, determination to see success happen. This is a card of forward 
movement. You're making some progress now. This is also a card of travel. You have travel here too. Twice travel here and travel here. Could you be moving away for a new job? Could you be moving away to be with somebody that you love? I don't know, maybe. All I do know is that justice, karmic justice is being applied to your life. Fairness, truth, cause and effect, and law. Because you are recognizing that you have an unhealthy restriction going on over here. You have an unhealthy restriction that you need to break and you know it and you are, you are breaking it. Karmic justice, universal justice is being applied in your life because you learned this lesson. Because you've done your due diligence and you're working hard and the universe, the universe is going to reward you for that very nicely, my friend. The moon card comes in and says you see clearly now you see clearly where you need to go and what you need to do where you need to go what you need to do the page of cups is a messenger of a creative new beginning and synchronicity in your life synchronicity I mean all of this right here that we just talked about is synchronicity it's cause and effect right what's the cause the cause is is you recognizing that you have some kind of unhealthy attachment or restriction whether that be another person a substance or just your own self depraving thoughts in your head whatever it is you've recognized it and you're giving it the boot you're giving it the boot. You're pulling on inner strength to go forward and have harmony and peace in your life. And you're actually doing it. Cause. What's the cause? Hard work and determination to build what you want. What do you want? Authority, establishment, and structure in your life. Manifesting the fuck out of it action forward movement control willpower determination that's the cause what's the effect freaking universal justice right the powers that be recognizing your efforts and rewarding you accordingly because now you see now you see now you see what's important to you. This is a messenger of creative new beginnings. That is your reward, my friend, is a creative new beginning and synchronicity in your life. Reevaluating, reevaluating everything, and sitting down with the high priestess, sitting down with the high priestess and making sure that you know that you know that you know the Empress fertile ground absolute fertile ground the epitome of abundance and fertility This is your reward, my friend. This Empress is your reward, whether it is a love situation, and this is something that you have been manifesting for a long time, working hard on, getting rid of toxicity in your life so your path is clear for you to come together with this Empress, or whether this is, this is the universe opening up abundance and fertility in your life fertile ground by which to have a new beginning and to plant your success either way either way this is your reward from the universe 
I want to point out real quick that the moon card is the card of Pisces. The high priestess is the card of Pisces. You may be dealing with the Pisces. You may not. I just wanted to point that out twice. Pisces right, right after each other. The empress is the card of Taurus. The devil is the card of Capricorn. The hierophant is the card of Taurus. So this empress right here could be the love of your life, could be fertile ground by which to build the rest of your life. Either way, it's gold. Either way, it is gold. The Ten of Pentacles is everything. It's the ultimate attainment. It's wealth, family, and establishment. So either this high, this high priestess, this empress right here, is the fertile ground by which this gold is going to grow, or this empress is an actual person that you see as gold. Either way, you are going to manifest a new opportunity. You're going to manifest with this empress, whether you need to use the energy of the empress to grow what you need to grow, or whether this empress is an actual person, you are going to manifest a new opportunity. Gift from the gods, my friend. King of Swords. Hmm. He's clear thinking, intellectual kind of guy. He has power and authority and truth in his words. This is truth that you're going to speak right here, Scorpio. This is truth that you're going to speak. Truth about the Eight of Cups. Truth about the Eight of Cups. What is this? What is this? Truth about walking away. Truth about withdrawal. A decision about walking away. Because then we have reuniting and reconciling. Sometimes it means a family, but I don't see that here. Truth about walking away from your family, I don't think so. And then we have the Two of Pentacles. Jug oh, oh, okay. So this King of Swords, you have some truth to speak about how you walked away. about how you walked away and now you want to reconcile and reunite with somebody from your past. Somebody from your past that brings balance and stability to your life. Somebody you want to reunite and reconcile with somebody from your, your past. You want to make them a priority now because you walked away at some point. You walked away from somebody in your past that you want to reconcile with now. And you want to prioritize that person. Okay, if this is a career reading, this could be you speaking your truth. About walking away. from something in your past, maybe a job, in order to have more stability in your life. Going towards something that means something to you. Love, something that you love. The Two of Swords comes in and talks to us about indecision, choices, 
truce, stalemate. So the truth that you're speaking is about the choices that you had at the time when you walked away in the first place. The Seven of Cups is about feeling confused and choices again. Ooh, the Seven of Swords is about shady behavior, betrayal, deception, stealing. And then we have the Sun, the King of Cups, the Five of Cups in reverse. Moving on, acceptance and forgiveness. Okay. 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 So, this is a love reading. Scorpio, you're going to speak your truth about why you walked away and how you want to reconcile and reunite now. How you want to prioritize this person in your life. How you love them. How you want the seedlings of love to begin to grow in your relationship again. The Two of Swords, if this is love, talks about calling a truce. Calling a truce to the situation and asking for forgiveness. The Seven of Cups says that, um, that, that you feel like maybe this is wishful thinking, but you're giving it a go anyway. Seven of Swords says that you're speaking your truth about shady behavior that was in the past. The Sun card says, whew, you feel so relieved to get that off of your chest. So relieved to get that off of your chest. It gives you a sense of being emotionally balanced. And this is also the king of love, mind you. Five of cups in reverse is moving on. Acceptance and forgiveness. So you're leaving all of that, this whole conversation that you have here. This whole conversation, or this truth that you're speaking, I don't know if it's a conversation, because there's only one truth speaker here, but you're speaking your truth, and it takes the weight of the world off of your shoulders, and you feel so much better. You feel so much better. The Five of Cups, in reverse, it does say that there's acceptance and forgiveness. So maybe whomever it is you're speaking this truth to, maybe they do accept it and forgive you. But more importantly, you're forgiving yourself. Finally, you're forgiving yourself. Right? If this is a work situation, you can put it the same way. Speaking your truth about walking away from something in your past in pursuit of balance in your life towards something that you absolutely love. You had decisions to make. You had choices reiterated by the Seven of Cups. You had choices. With the Seven of Swords, maybe it was shady. Maybe people, people saw it as shady. Maybe you up and quit. Maybe you took all your contacts with you. I don't know. Maybe you took some clients with you. But it was seen as shady, right? But getting that truth out there gives you a sense of relief, release and a sense of, 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 of positivity in your life that you haven't had for a minute. Gives you emotional balance and control. And there is forgiveness, acceptance, and moving on. Starcart says that since you have unloaded this heavy burden, heavy burden, since you have unloaded this heavy burden, there will be hope, faith, purpose, and renewal in your life. Death in reverse reiterates all of this. It's inner purging. This is the card of Scorpio, by the way. 
It's inner purging. It's a personal transformation. Judgment and absolution to a situation. The situation is absolved. It's over. Freedom makes you very happy. Celebrating. Planning for your future. A life cycle ending and a new life cycle beginning. A life cycle that brings to you wishes fulfilled, comfort, happiness, and satisfaction. And there's that Empress again. If this is love, it's with this Empress that was back here. If this is love, this Empress, you're coming together with this Empress and having a turning point in your destiny, planning for your future, feeling so much celebration, right? The, 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 the pain and the confusion and the conflict from the past is over. There's an absolution. You've done some inner purging and had a personal transformation, and there is hope, faith, purpose, and renewal in this relationship. If this is a work situation, same thing applies. Wishes fulfilled, happiness, comfort, satisfaction with this fertile ground by which you will build. What is with this Seven of Swords? This Seven of Swords right here is about betrayal deception, trying to get away with something, being stealthy and on the down low, just shady behavior. So shady behavior, broken heart. That's usually what happens when there's shady behavior, right? It's usually what happens when there's shady behavior. Shady behavior, broken heart, manifesting a new opportunity with purpose and success public recognition victory progress self-confidence we're going to come back to this okay we're going to come back to this actually let's just do it right now can you please clarify for me actually let's use the big deck can you please clarify for me what this shady behavior is because we know up here there was some kind of shady behavior right and now here it is again what is this shady behavior what is this tarot what is this shady behavior and why is it here and what do we need to know about it what do I do with this shady behavior card tarot what do I do with it hmm Page of Pentacles, manifesting a new opportunity. Hmm. That doesn't do it for me. What's this shady behavior? I don't understand, Tarot. Whoa, what's this? Whoa, what's this shady behavior? Okay, with the hangman coming out right there, that tells me that shady behavior has to do with some kind of some kind of a some kind of an inner thing okay with the hangman there I'm pretty sure it's the Scorpio that has had some shady behavior in the past because you're 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 pausing surrendering contemplating you're letting go and you're coming out with a new perspective. Um, I, I, so whatever kind of shady behavior that was, Scorpio, left somebody or multiple people with a broken heart. But you want to fix that by having the opportunity to create a new beginning with this person, with this situation, with this company because it's it's purposeful in your life 
with the six of wands saying you know victory progress self-confidence because you've dealt with the shady behavior and you want a new beginning the page of swords talks about having something to say it's it's quick communication though it's not um, it's not a long huge telephone call it's quick com communication so you have something that you want to say to someone or something about giving and receiving and sharing about prosperity right about who it is that you're going to share your life with if this is a love reading that's obvious if this is a financial reading this is you having wanting to have communication about how it is that you make your Pentacles who you give and receive with where you're going to spend your time in regards to a commitment <clears throat> commitment it's the root word of everything in our lives that requires a high level of prioritization. Our religious beliefs, conformity to social expectations, traditions, institutions, it's all rooted in commitment. So if this is a relationship, you want to, you want to say something about coming together and sharing your lives in commitment. If this is work, you want to say something. You want to communicate about where and how it is that you spend your time making pentacles in regards to committing. Six of Swords comes in and says transition. There is a transition from one phase of your life into another phase of your life. Wheel of Fortune right there. Ten of Wands comes in and says you've worked hard for this. You've worked hard for this. The Nine of Wands comes in and says that um, it's taken some courage and some persistence and some resilience. There's your return to communication right there. There's your return to communication. There's you putting it out there about coming together with commitment, transitioning from one way into another, about the hard work, right? About the, the courage and the persistence that it's taken you to get to this point. And there's your returned messages. This is an action oriented communication right it didn't fall on deaf ears it was returned to you the result of this is the wheel of fortune one life cycle ending and a new life cycle beginning a turning point in your destiny karma fulfilled this turning point in your destiny this change of life cycles for you Ace of Cups, Ace of Pentacles, you can't see that. Ace of Cups, Ace of Pentacles, Ace of Wands. This turning point in your destiny creates seedlings of love, seedlings of new financial, new prosperity, okay? New prosperity. Seedlings of love seedlings of new prosperity seedlings of inspired new beginnings i mean it's like it's like when this wheel turns takes its first rotation it's like seeds of just new fresh exciting everything just fall into your life scorpio into your life <clears throat> these seedlings right here these are only given to us by the universe out of universal justice remember we talked about that back here universal justice 
These seedlings are only given to us when we have worked the ground, when the ground is ready for them to be planted. That's when these seedlings come into our life. Okay? This doesn't mean, boom, there's going to be love. Boom, there's going to be prosperity. Boom, there's going to be a passionate new beginning. No. What this means is you are now, you have now been allowed the opportunity to plant the seeds of love, to plant the seeds of prosperity, and to plant the seeds of inspiration and passionate new beginnings in your life. It's up to you to tend to them, to water them, to protect them, and to help them grow into strong, solid opportunities, strong, solid life events. And when you tend to those, when they grow, that is when you will have the Four of Wands. Celebration, harmony, home, marriage. Whether it's marriage to an individual or marriage to your job. I mean, most of us spend more time with our job than we do with our family, okay? So don't freak out. I'm never getting married again. Don't freak out, okay? And marriage has a lot of different um, characteristics, right? It's all rooted in the Hierophant, which is commitment. Where the hell is that Hierophant at? Hierophant? Where is it? Bear with me. Hold on. I don't know what I did with it. Wherever that Hierophant is, twice in your reading, mind you, it's about commitment, okay? It's about absolute 100% commitment. Can you have 100% commitment without marriage? Absolutely. Positively, without a doubt. But once you raise up these seeds, this is what they will produce. They will produce celebration in your life, harmony in your life and in your home, in your community, and the happiness that comes with the commitment surrounded in the term marriage. Okay? There's you, Scorp. Sitting, sitting in, on your throne, sitting in your power. Absolutely indignant that this is what you have worked for. This is karmic justice. This is yours. Absolutely. The Queen of Wands, I know it's a fire energy, right? And I know you're a water energy, but it doesn't matter. We all take on fire energy, right? She is indignant knowing that she has worked her ass off for this, whether it's a relationship or a, a financial opportunity. She deserves it, and she knows it. There is an inevitable end, Scorpio, to the mental prison that you tend to keep yourself in for way too long. There's an absolute end to the, to, to the mental conflict and the, the mental restrictions, maybe even to this, the self-depraving thoughts over here from the devil. There's an absolute end to it because what's on your horizon? A new journey and a new beginning. A new journey and a new beginning that is, that is solid, that has strength, that leaves you feeling off the hook passionate, off the hook passionate. Sometimes this can be passionate messages. Wait, let's see what else we got here. <laughs> okay. That leaves you feeling totally passionate, right? This is a career reading. That's what's going on for you. If this is a love reading, you are going to deliver passionate messages because there's the page of swords right there saying so. If this is a career reading, leaves you feeling so passionate about life and there's some communication that needs to be had, 
in regards to these new beginnings and this awesome stuff that's unfolding in your life. Queen of Swords, there's the communication back. Sending communication out, sending communication out, receiving communication in. About love. About partnership, relationships. This is a love reading, communication. Scorpio is sending out passionate messages. And there's return communication. It's, it's intelligent communication, though. It's not, it's not willy-nilly communication. It's not, it's not high school communication. Do you love me? I love you. Yes, I love you. Do you love me? It's not that. This is adult communication about love, relationships, partnerships by which there will be hope, faith, purpose, renewal, and spirituality. That's beautiful. That's beautiful. This is a career reading, communication out, communication in, about a partnership that is going to bring renewal, hope, faith, purpose, and spirituality into your life. That is a beautiful reading, Scorpio. That is a beautiful reading. Man, you have worked really hard, really, really hard at all this. I was going to pull some more cards, but I just want to talk about the major arcana and the lessons associated in this. Just a quick intermission here. I know this reading has gone a long time. You can click off now if you got the gist of it. I, at this point, I am going to go through all of the major arcana that were in this reading. They're huge huge life lessons and we're going to talk about each life lesson in this reading if you'd like to stick around for that stick around if not this is a good place to part ways namaste this reading okay because there are there are there are lessons associated here first one out of the box is the devil right this devil card let me put these in order so i don't get confused your lesson here twofolded your lesson is that you are not tied to this toxic situation. You're not tied to this. You are voluntarily staying there. But you know that because the Eight of Wands follows this card, you're done. It, you're cutting it loose and you're off. So that's good, you've learned that. The second lesson is the shadow self and the disparaging thoughts that go through our head about ourselves. But you've learned that too. It's gone, it's out, you cut it off. The Hierophant, commitment. The lesson here is that you have to learn what is important enough in your life to warrant commitment. Commitment comes in all different levels, in all different doses, right? But I think Scorpio has to understand the importance of commitment even when it makes us fearful. I know I forgot I'm gonna point out the signs to these major arcana too. Okay, this is the card of Capricorn. This is the card of Taurus. Strength. The card of Leo. Strength is just that, right? It's about it's about pulling down and manifesting inner strength. It's about putting down self-doubt and pulling out compassion for yourself, courage and strength, knowing that you can do it no matter what, knowing that you can do whatever you set your mind to. The Emperor is the card of Aries. To me, in my readings, this is also the card of Scorpio. The Emperor is all about authority, establishment, structure, and control in your life. The lesson here 
twofolded is number one, don't be a control freak, okay? Don't be a control freak. Sometimes you have to let go to receive. Number two is that is that authority, establishment, and structure in your life is what keeps us in check. It keeps us in check. And I think Scorpio understands that lesson as well. The magician manifesting. If you don't know how to manifest, do some research on it. The word manifesting is thrown around fast and loose on YouTube tarot, okay? Manifesting is an extremely powerful energy. You are what you eat, and that is the truth. You are what you think, and that is the truth. Be very careful what you manifest into your life. Watch out what's at the forefront of your mind. Keep note of the things that you're thinking about when you go to sleep and the things that you think about when you wake up because that is what you're manifesting. Have control of your thoughts because what you think is what you are. The chariot. This is a card about control, willpower, and determination to take the action to secure the success that you want. This is the card of cancer, by the way. This is, um, the, the magician is, is air energy and um, it's the planet of Mars, I think. The chariot, okay? It's, it's about, and I think also Scorpio understands very, very much the control, willpower and determination that it takes to see success put into action. Justice. I mean, all of these came out in like the same little pocket, which is, it's poignant, okay? Huge life changes, life lessons, karmic lessons that you have learned. Huge, huge, huge learning moments in your life, Scorpio. Justice. The lesson here, Scorp, is to have faith that when you do good and right, that the universe will, re will reward you with fairness, truth, cause and effect, and law in your life. The moon, the card of spice, oh, of spices, it's a spicy card. Justice. Justice is the card of Libra. Libra. The moon. The card of Pisces. The moon, and sometimes people say Cancer as well. The moon is about tapping into your subconscious mind and making sure that all that glitters is gold. Seeing the forest through the trees. It's all about your subconscious mind. And I'm going to put the High Priestess next to that because this is also the card of Pisces. The High Priestess is your intuition. She's divine knowledge, sacred knowledge, the divine feminine, your subconscious mind. I'm going to sneeze. Hold on. I'm so sorry. <laughs> your subconscious mind. The lesson for this card is to make sure that you take a minute, you take a minute and you pause and you examine everything around you and you not only use your cerebral intellect, but you use your spiritual intuition to make important decisions in your life. And when you do that, you will know that you know that you know. The hangman. This is a card just like the high priestess, right? Taking a minute and pausing before you make important decisions in your life. Taking a moment and pausing and contemplating, seeing things from all sides and all perspectives, right? Making sure 
that you know that you know that you know. In this hangman energy is where you need to meet your high priestess. It's where you need to come to the moon and, and have resolve that you have checked off all the boxes and come out on the other side with the perspectives needed to make an important life decision. The hangman, does the hangman have a, does the hangman have a, a guy, a, 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 a sign? No, but it's water energy and it's ruled by Neptune. And it's interesting that you have a lot of water energy in this chart. You may very well may be dealing with some kind of a water energy. My camera is about to go dead. Please stay with me just one second. I do not want to lose you. I have come this far and this wide and this long. I do not want to lose you. Bear with me just one second, Scorpio. Bear with me. Bear with me. Don't go. Whoops. Don't go anywhere, Scorpio. I got gotcha. you. I'm going to save it. Hold on. There it goes. Yay. Okay. Okay. The Empress. This is the card of Taurus. She's holding the symbol of Venus in her hands. This card is about fertility and abundance, beauty, nature, nurturing, everything motherly you could possibly imagine comes from this empress. She's the culmination of all four queens in the deck, right? She's got it going on. When you see this card in your readings, if it's not talking about a Taurus, I mean, and that's why this card represents Taurus, because that's what Taurus is. The Taurus female is everything that the Empress embodies. If you're not talking about a Taurus in your reading, you're talking about fertile ground by which to plant the seeds, to grow the abundance that will nurture you for the days to come. True. The star card. The star. The star is the card of Aquarius. And it's interesting because like, like, like the Empress embodies the spirit of the Taurus female, the star card embodies the energy of the Aries. I'm sorry, of the Aquarius, right? Aquarius is hope, faith, purpose, renewal, and spirituality in your life. This is all about seeing the beauty that awaits you. It's about renewing hope. It's about renewing faith. It's about renewing purpose. It's about renewing your spirituality. The lesson here is to, to understand that good things happen, bad things happen, but never ever lose sight of the fact that we live in a cycle. We live in a cycle and all things end and all things are renewed. Don't ever lose hope that when you're in a bad place, it's going to end. It's going to end, and there will be hope, faith, purpose, and renewal in your life. Have we already talked about the Hierophant? Yeah, we did. We've already talked about strength. The Fool and the Wheel of Fortune. The Fool, new journey and a new beginning. I know this is going super long, Scorp. This is like an hour long. The Fool card, a new journey and a new beginning. This Fool card, your lesson with this Fool card is if you want a new journey, if you want a new beginning, you absolutely, positively must leave all of your baggage on the curb. You cannot have a new journey and a new beginning taking anything with you from your past. You have to come into it spiritually 
naked, spiritually naked, innocent, vulnerable, because that's the only way a new journey and a new beginning can be successful is if you come into it absolutely naked, right? And last but not least, the Wheel of Fortune. This Wheel of Fortune, I love this card. This card is about karmic life cycles ending and new life cycles beginning for you. This is about a turning point in your destiny. The lesson of this card is to be cognizant and aware of the doors that are opening, of the opportunities that the universe is presenting you. That is the lesson of this card. So many people spin round and round and notice I'm going counterclockwise because they don't see the doors. They're not aware. They're not cognizant. They're not enlightened to understand when those doors open, you have to go through them. You have to go through those doors because if you don't, you will spend your life in a stagnation of counterclockwise motion, never making any progress in your life. You have to watch for those doors to open and the doors to close as well. You have to understand when to stop jiggling the doorknob. But you also have to understand that if you don't try to jiggle that doorknob, the door is never going to open. That's the lesson for this card. All right, Scorpio, that is your reading. It was awesome. So awesome. Such a beautiful future you have for yourself. Namaste, my friend.